In this lecture, I'd like to actually use Boltzmann factors and partition functions to prove the equipartition of energy. Now, previously, we've been using the idea of equipartition of energy, and we've already discussed it. So this is the idea that for every degree of freedom that you have, a particle will get kT over 2 of energy. Now here, k is Boltzmann's constant, t is the temperature in Kelvin, and of course the 2, right? So that means that, for example, for an ideal gas, um, a monatomic ideal gas in three dimensions, each one of the three dimensions of motion gives you kT over 2, so that, you know, a single gas particle would have 3 halves kT of energy, and a collection would then have an internal energy of 3 halves nKT. So we've used this idea before. We've also talked about it in the context of an Einstein solid within oscillators, right? You get kT over 2 each for a kinetic and potential energy in each direction, which when you sum over all of the degrees of freedom would give you uh, 3 kT for total for one particle and 3 nKT for the total internal energy. So that's what we've been discussing, okay? We've been using this theorem for quite some time, but now let's prove that it's generally true and prove when it's true, okay? So it turns out that the equipartition theorem only works well when the energy can be written as a function of the position or the speed squared. And this is a quadratic system, okay? So for the ideal gas, for example, 1 half mv squared is the kinetic energy. So it's a constant times the speed squared, right? And then for the Einstein solid, your potential energy is 1 half kx squared. So see, it's the same kind of form. Now, in Schroeder's thermal physics, they generalize that function and they say, okay, that means that you can write your energy as some constant some, times some quantity squared. So let's just, you know, call that CQ squared and we'll be totally general. And then that could be applicable to any expression for energy that could be written in this way, okay? So if we allow our energy equal to CQ squared, a generic function, then we would write our partition function for that as the sum over all the Boltzmann factors, remember that's our definition of um, our partition function, is the sum over all the states of the Boltzmann factor for that state. So that would be the sum of e to the minus e sub s over kT, where e sub s is the energy of the state, k is Boltzmann's constant, and t is the temperature. Now, that could be written for this cq squared thing, the summation over e to the minus cq squared over kT. Now, each state would be separated by a small amount in Q. I'll call that delta Q. So I could then write um, a 1 over delta Q out front and then multiply times a delta Q inside for each term. And that would be like multiplying by 1. And there's no problem with that. So I can write Z is equal to 1 over Q times the summation over the, over the states of E to the minus CQ squared divided by KT times delta Q. All right? No problem so far. Now, if that separation is very small, if the delta Qs are tiny, then we could make this summation into an integral, right? So Z would then be 1 over delta Q times the integral over all possible states, right? So if we're integrating over Q and Q is squared, then it doesn't really matter positive, negative, right? So we're going to sum over all possible values of Q from minus infinity to infinity to make it as generic as possible. And then uh, our integral will be negative CQ squared over KT times DQ. So that's what we're doing. Okay, here's our integral. Now to do this integral, we're going to do a substitution, okay? We're going to substitute that um, X our substitution variable is equal to the square root of beta c times q. Now remember that beta is 1 over kt, so this is equivalent to saying that x is equal to the square root of c over kt times q. And that would mean that when we squared x, that we basically got our exponent here, right? Negative um, cq squared over kt, right? Okay, now that means that dx would be the square root of beta c times dq, remembering that beta is 1 over kt. So, if we solve, dq could be written as dx divided by the square root of beta c, okay? And if we plug that in, then we have our substitution complete. So, z would be equal to 1 over the square root of beta c times delta q times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. Now, in Schroeder's text, um, they show that this integral here, minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx, 
that that integral evaluates to the square root of pi. You might also cover this um, integral in some of your calculus classes, but as this isn't a calculus lecture, I'm not going to derive it, and I'm going to present that without proof, okay? All right, so that, eval that integral evaluates to square root of pi. Plugging in for the evaluation of that integral, we have z is equal to the square root of pi divided by the square root of beta c times delta q. So now we have our partition function. Once we have our partition function, we can use it to find some interesting things, okay? In a previous lecture, which you should definitely watch if you haven't watched it, on the rotational energy states, okay, I proved that the average energy, E bar, was equal to negative 1 over Z partial Z with respect to beta. This is a general, generally true statement. We derived it in the lecture on rotational energy states and partition functions, but this expression is generally true. Now I'm going to use it. E bar is equal to negative 1 over Z partial Z with respect to beta. The partial of Z with respect to beta for Z is equal to the square root of pi over beta c delta q would be equal to, first negative 1 over z would give you negative square root of beta c over pi times delta q, right? And then we would multiply that times partial of z with respect to beta, which would give us the constants again, the square root of pi over c times 1 over delta q times the derivative of beta to the minus 1 half power, which is minus 1 half beta to the minus 3 halves power. Okay, so what we have here, if you look at all these things multiplied times one another, we have the constants canceling out, right? Uh, the c over pi cancels out with the pi over c in the square root. The delta q cancels out with the delta q in the denominator. The minus sign cancels out with the minus sign. And then we have left a one half, a beta to the minus three halves, and a beta to the one half. When you multiply those things through, you get one over two beta, and that is kt over two. We just proved it, okay? So if you can write your energy as a constant times some quantity that you're dealing with squared, like 1 half mv squared, 1 half kx squared, right? If you can write it in that way, then that means that for every direction that you can write that, you get kt over 2 of energy, the equipartition theorem. So I think that this highlights, you know, how powerful this partition function Boltzmann factor kind of approach is in statistical mechanics and thermal physics, okay? Now we just proved that this equipartition theorem is generally true for quadratic systems, but it won't work out that way for the others because the integral won't evaluate the same way, okay? Um, it's also not going to work when we can't assume that that summation eventually goes to an integral. Remember, we made that step here between lines two and three of our proof. We said, okay, this summation goes to an integral because the, uh, the q's aren't very far apart. But if you've got a quantum system and the temperature isn't very high and a lot of other issues, then you can't make that step. And so it's not going to be generally valid for them. Okay? So just bear in mind when your assumptions are true in any given proof. All right? Okay. I hope that made sense. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in class.